today it's time for an ignition upgrade. So for the ignition upgrade, I'm gonna start off with the spark plugs. Now on these, I'm going one range colder. So I'm using a BKR7E. Now I won't get into what all these letters and numbers mean, apart from the seven. The seven is the heat range of the plug. Now the seven being the heat range isn't how strong the spark is or how warm the spark is what it actually means is how quickly it can dissipate the heat from the spark plug into the cylinder head itself and because i'm going turbocharged i am going to be increasing the cylinder temperature so i do want a little bit of that temperature to be dissipated elsewhere rather than the cylinder if you were rebuilding the standard engine as in naturally aspirated you would stick with the 6 heat range spark plug as you don't want to dissipate too much heat into the cylinder head because this could cause fouling on the spark plug. Fouling occurs where the spark plug is too cold and it can't burn off all the carbon deposits quick enough. Then the carbon builds up between the electrode and the tip and then shorts out causing damage to the spark plugs and misfires and so on. At the minute I am only going one range colder but in the future maybe on some dyno runs or something like that and I get maybe a little misfire or something the first thing I will check is the plugs and if they do start to foul I might have to consider going to an 8 spark plug heat range so that I can try and prevent fouling happening. Now the next thing I want to do before putting the plugs in is to gap the spark plug. Now for my application I have chose 0.8 of a millimeter, but it may differ it all depending on what setup you have whether it's naturally aspirated, turboed or supercharged you'll have to find your own spark plug gap for this but I'm choosing 0.8. Now when we're talking about the spark plug gap what we're actually talking about is this gap here between the electrode and the tip. What we want is for that to be 0.8 of a millimeter, which is 32 foul. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You could do this with feeler gauges, wire gauges, or what I like to use is a, a gapping plate. So to do this, all you do is slide the tool in between there, and as you can see this is at 0.32 of an inch if it was too little you would use the opener on the end here and twist it up if that was too big you would just tap it on a soft surface like a little bit of wood until you get the desired gap now to put the spark plugs in the head you're going to want to use a spark plug socket a spark plug socket has a little rubber bit down in the bottom there that suctions onto the spark plug to stop you dropping it in the head. You don't want to drop the spark plug in the head because it could foul up on the way down and then it could adjust the spark plug gap itself. See, it can't fall out of that like it would a normal socket. This next step is completely optional. Some people like to do it, some people don't. But before screwing your spark plug into the head, I'm going to use just a little bit of silicon grease. Smear that round a little bit and then pop her in the head. The silicon grease should stop the spark plug corroding into the head and it's also waterproof. Now the spark plugs need to be torqued up between 132 inch pounds and 192 inch pounds. So 
since we're up here I'm going to be installing this end cap with the seal plate as I didn't put it on the other day when I was installing the camshafts and it needs to go on now before the rocker cover so make sure both mating surfaces are nice and clean pop in the two bolts and just leave it a little slack for now as this sealing plate needs to go in here and that'll leave us a little bit of room but what I do like to do is just put a very very small bit of RTV right round here to ensure this is going to seal as I am reusing this now, these two bolts need to be torqued up from 69 to 95 inch pounds Now to keep this in from popping out, there is a little stay brace, which is just one bolt right in the back of the engine. There's no exact torque setting for this, but it just needs to have a very good nip. Now what should go on next is the rocker cover, but before this goes on, I need to talk about something else as that needs to go on at the same time. And that is the G19 coil on plug conversion plate. This uses the three middle bolts that attach the rock cover cam cover to the engine. So this needs to go on at the same time. This also has some recesses in the back for O-rings to sit in to prevent water going down into the spark plug holes. I'll show you how to install this along with the rocker cover and then I'll explain why I have chosen this to go on my engine. Now when you're installing your rocker cover on any engine whether it be a Mark 1, a Mark 2 or a 2.5 there is one crucial step first and that is to put sealant in six places here, 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 here and here. Basically both sides of the front cam and whether it be the CAS or this sealing plate on this engine at the back. Now the rocker cover never seems to seal right in these corners and it can cause oil to leak out all down the front and back of your engine and cause you to think maybe my camshaft seal is leaking but it's not it's just this rocker cover so very important step make sure you do it even on routine maintenance like your timing belt must be done. Now install a nice fresh and new rocker cover gasket into your rocker cover. Now pop your rocker cover on, it may take a little bit of a wiggle. I'm just going to drop in the outer eight bolts, but not the middle three yet. Now it's time for the G19 coil on plug plate conversion. Now on the back, there is the groove for the O-ring, so they need to go in now. And then flip it over. Be careful that none of the O-rings drop out. The O-rings are supplied in the kit when you buy the plate along with three bolts that go in the middle as these are longer than the standard rock cover bolts as you've got this to compensate for. Now these need to be done up from 43 to 78 inch pounds starting with the middle one going to the front then to the exhaust side to the back and then the intake side I'm 
I'm sure you're dying to know what this plate is and what it is doing on my engine. Well, this plate has two jobs to do. Job number one is to keep the water out of the spark plug hole, which this does a great job of. Job number two is to hold a coil on plug. Rather than using the old ignition leads, which has a separate coil with an ignition lead that attaches to the spark plug, I am gonna be converting it to coil on plug. And this plate is for an Audi R8 coil. Now, why am I converting it to an Audi R8 coil? Well, there are lots of benefits. So with this, I can run sequential ignition. I can control the dwell time, the dead time, and a lot more other options. But most importantly is this is a hell of a lot more powerful than the standard coil pack and when you are with a boosted application you can produce so much pressure in the engine that it can blow out the spark and you really don't want that to happen so I'm gonna use this it produces a much more powerful spark and hopefully I won't ever have a spark blow out on me there are other options such as a Toyota Yaris coil, which is still a significant improvement on the standard MX-5 coil. And other people do do plates to put those coils onto this engine. But I have chose this because by far I think it looks the nicest. And these Audi R8 coil plugs look damn cool. And I can say I've got an R8 part on my engine. but. To be able to run these, you will need to use a standalone ECU, as the standard ECU doesn't know how to control these. Now, the installation of these is really simple. The end already comes pre-greased. Just shove them in the hole. Now obviously the plugs for your standard two coils are not going to plug into these. So there's a couple of options for you. You can get a DIY plug kit where you have the plugs and you terminate the ends yourself or you can get what they call a patch lead or a repair lead meant for a VW Audi group which is going to make life a lot simpler. So for now we're just going to plug these in. I will show you how to wire this all up in a different video once I've got the ECU sorted out and the injectors as the injectors run on the same loom the coils do. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you did, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.